loves hearing Barbara Shane sing Shorty. She really just <laughs> I didn't listening, mean to. Was, <laughs> listening to it wasn't directed towards me. Listening to this context of when do we say Shorty and how often we say Shorty and I say Shorty all the time. But it's you know I was in regards to whether my heart felt like dancing last week when I was sitting and what am I going to talk about? I'm paying attention to everything that's happening on Facebook, because that's what I do. I am addicted to Facebook, if I have not made that clear. And so people, everybody on Facebook, all of my Facebook friends, I should say, were feeling restless, feeling this sort of I need to do somethingness going on. And it made me think about the whole concept of Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. Joseph Campbell's a writer. He wrote Heart of Darkness and some other things, very macho things that I've never seen. Uh, but he's known for these sorts of hero stories. And he identified the fact that there's this formula in, in all kinds of hero stories, from Jesus to, I think, the, before Jesus, there was Homer's story of the Odyssey. There were all kinds of, from Greek mythology on, these stories of the hero. And there's this formula that you use as a writer, and as a writer, it's something that I identify with, to create the perfect story about a hero that keeps people engaged. So as I'm thinking about looking at the structure, going over the structure of what a hero's journey is, it, made, it reminded me that we are all heroes. And since I'm always looking for an opportunity to wear my Superman shirt on a Sunday, <laughs> gave me the perfect opportunity to stand up and talk about heroism. And so I thought, you know, we, we talk a lot about the concept of the macrocosm and the microcosm. And the macrocosm is essentially the allness. It can be as big as the universe itself. The microcosm could be me or it could be a cell. So when you think about it from that perspective, America can be the macrocosm and me as an individual can be the microcosm. So thinking back to what the hero's journey consists of, the microcosm, me and my hero's journey versus America and its hero's journey, I was thinking about starts with the, the structure itself starts with the ordinary world. So life is just blah. It's okay. Things are going well. We're, we're surviving and we're functioning. And if I think about America in the last, let's say, eight years, it's been, there have been, there's gay marriage has passed in the last eight years. The Affordable Care Act was introduced in the last eight years. Unemployment is down. Crime is down. All kinds of metrics that one can say the last eight years has been a pretty ordinary world. And so there was a call to action. That has to happen. Every good story has to have a call to action. And so we had that. We had a very interesting election where people were called to act a certain kind of way. Everybody has their own hero's, hero's journey, so everybody acted as a hero in their own way and made the decisions that made the best for them. And so right now, life is interesting. America's story is interesting. It's worth watching. CNN... CNN's ratings are going through the roof. CNN's ratings have been a lot lower for the last eight years because America wasn't all that interesting to watch. We've been watching the Kardashians for eight years. But at this point, America's interesting. People are watching CNN again. So there's the call to adventure, and we're participating. And what happened is the world responded to the call for action. Two and a half million people around the world stood up and said, let's talk about women in a way that I don't think the world has ever done before. I'm not a huge student of history. <laughs> yeah, I think it was pretty awesome because I, I think, you know, we, we don't talk about things like paid leave or, you know, families are, that's how we function. We, we all come from some kind of family. And so the fact that we are talking about where we come from and how we treat families is a worthy conversation to have. And it's being, hap being had on a much bigger scale. CNN dedicated, I came home from the Women's March and turned on CNN, and they just were talking about women's issues in a way that CNN has never done before. But at the same time, Senator Kamala Harris talked about how women's issues are the economy, health care. Everything that's a women's issue is everyone's issue. And so it's just we're, we're having a conversation about what it means to be one, recognizing that we are all one. And this is such an exciting time, an interesting time to be alive. So as part of the hero's journey, the next thing that happens is the refusal of the call. 
So there's the call to do something, the call to act. And the hero says, mm, not ready for that. And if I take this back to, to the microcosm for myself, before I moved to LA, I always wanted to work in television. But that, that taking that step of just getting in my car, because everybody I had a conversation with about how to get a job in LA, is you just have to be here. You can't try and get a job in Chicago. And I was saying, my mind is stronger than that. I can manifest something better than this. But I realized that it wasn't about manifestation. It was about recognizing that living from a place of faith means that I can get in my car and move to LA and not have to worry about being homeless. And I'm so grateful that I've never been homeless here. So it's this idea that we can refuse the call. And for many years, I didn't come. I did not move to LA until so long that when my wife and I started dating, my friends all said, she's never moving to LA. She's been saying this forever. It's not true. Don't worry about it. You're fine. And so when I said, I'm moving to LA, no, I'm doing it right now. She was like, wait a minute, your friend said you weren't gonna do this. I don't, but that's what happened is I, because I refused the call for so long, people started to believe. I had my ordinary world, I was sitting in it, and people believed I wasn't gonna step up and be a hero. So we committed to the journey, drove out to LA together, and the next thing that happens is there are tests, allies and enemies. So, Ernest Holmes says that there is nothing to be learned from suffering. And I spent some time, like when I first heard that, I thought about all of the lessons that I've learned from suffering. So I'm like, wait a minute, Ernie. And I think today's his birthday. Am I, is today Ernest Holmes' birthday? All right, happy birthday, Ernest. So we're, we're talking about me arguing with you in my head about nothing to be learned from suffering. So I had this idea of, you know, I've learned so much how can we say this? But the idea of it is that when we act and live from faith all the time, when we recognize that we are living a hero's journey and that we get to enjoy the adventure, that we don't need to suffer. And I get that in theory. <laughs> so I, I've been in this teaching to what we call, we talk about how trained thought is more powerful than untrained thought. So the idea of what, if I just react to everything that happens to me versus choosing to go into each situation saying, I'm gonna choose faith, I'm making a decision to choose faith, because it's more powerful, the universe responds immediately. And in theory, the whole idea of if I have trained my mind powerfully enough that every time something comes up, I choose faith every single time. I do not snap nearly as well as Reverend James. I was not in West Side Story. <laughs> but if I realize this, if I have faith every single time, it's easy. Life is easy. And we talk a lot in Science of Mind of when you know, when you expect life to be easy, it is easy. But for many of us, we're here every Sunday because life still isn't easy. There's still some things, there's still some times that we go to fear instead of faith. And we come here to remember that love is all there is because the world doesn't remind you of it in the same way that we remind you of it. And so thinking about that idea of the fact that you have allies, the universe is consistently having your back. Your life will always unfold perfectly, regardless of whether you know the science of mind exists, life still unfolds perfectly for you. The hero's journey is always unfolding perfectly. But the idea that there are tests and enemies, I had to sit with this and think about it. And, you know, really what it is, is I have opportunities to train my mind even more than I've already trained it. If life is already easy, I don't really experience the fullness of life. And so I was watching, because I don't, I do read. I was going to say I don't read books, but I do read. I'm just, like James, I was watching his talks, and he kept quoting all these books, and I'm just going to quote TV right now. So <laughs> I was watching Oprah Winfrey's, it was like a Super Soul Sunday, and Teek Nhat Han was on it. And he talked about how we have to suffer because that's where joy comes from, that we can't truly appreciate the joy of life unless we have suffered first. And coming back for me working in television, television is not an easy profession to work in. And I've had to, I've had to really move up to a certain level. And what I said about being a recovered, not recognizing I was a perfectionist until recently, 
everything on TV has to go right. You think of something like Hairspray Live. If one person messes that up, everybody sees it on TV. And that person, NBC is looking at this PA or whoever it was that was in charge of that one thing of getting so-and-so's mic because they have to run across the lot. Like that, that endeavor of Hairspray Live was insane. I watched the little before show and it's, there's a lot going on. A lot goes on into making a television production. And it's so easy to say, oh, I made a mistake. It's all good, it's all gone, keep rolling. And TV, they don't care about that. You don't get to say, I mean, you can, but you're not coming back. They're not inviting you back onto this show. <laughs> and so I really sort of stepped up in regards to recognizing that my life is unfolding perfectly, but learning from each mistake, but really going into everything that I do from a place of recognizing that I am doing my best, but I don't have to be afraid that this isn't going to work out. And so I've really sort of trained my mind even more. So when I have a job and the job goes amazingly, I get to say, oh, look how great I was when I came from some other place where I wasn't so great. I have this comparison, and having that comparison works for me. So that idea of having tests, allies, and enemies, it's all part of our experience of life. And even though no one is actually our enemy, all that is, all enemies are, are people who show up to remind you of who you are to help you learn how to use your mind, I want to say better, but that's not a good word. Let's say more effectively and more consistently. So uh, today is, Sydney and Shelly aren't here, but today is Sydney's hard birthday, who's one of our teens. And her mom, Shelly, wrote on Facebook today, because like I said, addicted to Facebook. Um, she wrote this, these 12 rules for being human, and the one in particular that stood out for me is... There is no better than here. When your there has become a here, you will simply obtain another there. That will look, that, let me start all over again. I'm trying to like keep this down here. I'm going to read this for real. There is no better than here. When your there has become a here, you will simply obtain another there that will again look better than here. You see why I, t I stumbled all that up? I'm still stumbling that up. But anyway. So the idea is Matthew McConaughey talked about this. The Matthew McConaughey of 10 years from now is, is the Matthew McConaughey. He, that is who his hero is. That there is nothing better than here, but because the universe always has to expand, the universe always has to express, our here is always going to be, hooray, here is here, but at the same time, I'm learning everything that I need to learn and experiencing everything that I need to experience to really appreciate the new here when I get to that new here. So thinking about this whole, there's, there's more twists and turns because it's Joseph Campbell and it's a story and their treasure, finding the treasure, losing the treasure. Life is life, a lot goes on in it. But the general idea of it is, is that we are all heroes. We all have this divine opportunity to recognize that, to strap on our capes and wife, I'm gonna call you to bring me my cape. It's in my, uh, I was, I always say, wife, where's my cape? Like in The Incredibles where you say, woman, where's my super suit? And then she says, why do you need to know? <laughs> so I'm going to strap on my cape. We, sh we should all do this together. Sh stand up and we're going to strap on our imaginary capes while I strap on my real one. So John Livesey taught us that when you stand like Superman and imagine your cape blowing in the wind, that this, there's an actual study, whoever it is that you want to stand, Wonder Woman, Superman, whoever you want to be, but there's an actual study. I learned this from Grey's Anatomy first because I learned everything from TV. <laughs> but John Livesey expanded on it, that when you stand like this, that you, get, you feel like a hero. You go through your day feeling like a hero. So as part of stepping it up this month, I invite you to start your day in recognition, starting stepping up into the heroic beings that you all are, recognizing that you are all God. And as I invite Robbie and the band, I'm going to say something a little more, but I'm going to invite Robbie and the band up to the stage. I'm also going to remind you all, to, oh, I love that you're flying. That 
Martin, Reverend Martin Luther King said, the arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And we don't talk about justice in the context of, of, spiritual, of science of mind because we recognize that there is technically no such thing as justice. It's all good. It's all God. Everything that we equate our own individual minds to is our own perfect journey. No one can take anything from us. But at the same time, because we are all one, we, we recognize that our participation in oneness, us speaking up for love, helps create a vibration of love. And we get to feel good about the fact that we are operating from this vibration of love. 